Hey y'all, it's Natalie and I have a new layout today using the Pink Fresh Studio Good Times collection. This was their fall collection for this year. And I have these pictures of my little pup, Lola. And I'm also going to combine this collection with this two-step leaves combo set by Waffle Flowers. Um, it is a leaf stamp that comes with the matching die. In my opinion, every stamp should come with a matching die. I'm not one for fussy cutting and I love a good die that cuts out my stamps for me. Um, so right now I have these two photos. I accidentally printed it twice. I did it, I did it at two separate times and they're kind of different tones. And then I have this other photo. And so I was thinking about using both of them, but um, right now I'm just going through the Good Times paper collection pack. Um, and they're all so beautiful. My idea is I want to do this white background and do a strip of paper across the top and the bottom. Um, so I'm trying to pick a pretty solid paper to use as that strip of paper. So I just showed you kind of all of them that exist in the paper pack. And I'm going back to the photos and I decide just to use this one shot of Lola. Um, so I'm grabbing a few of the more solid pieces of paper, one that have like a, you know, a repeating pattern on the page and trying to decide which one to use. So I go with this purple color and it works really well with the leaves that are in the photo. <laughs> I, that second one that's at the bottom of that stack of photos is one that I edited and I posted it on my like personal account and the internet blew up <laughs> at least my part, my corner of it because I think everyone thought that I had dyed Lolo's fur blue just because of the way that her black fur reflected in the light and it edited weird and it was around Halloween when I posted it and so everybody was like did you dye her hair blue and I'm like well I mean she is an old blue hair she's quite old but <laughs> I did not dye her fur so anyway, I thought it was a really sweet photo of her sitting in the leaves. And um, I like the look of the two different tones of photos stacked um, next to one another. So it was like a happy accident that I printed it twice. So I have my stamping platform out and I'm going to use it with these waffle flower dies. Now I'm using this on textured card stock, which I like the look of, but you will usually have to stamp um, with a with a press or stamp press or like multiple times to get it to fully um, give you a really good image on textured cardstock. Um, but I, I like the texture of it and the look and the pattern that it gives. So I'm okay with that. Um, this exact stamping platform is not available in the store. However, there is a new one, I think by Sizzix. If you don't have a stamping platform, I highly recommend one for things like this, where you're creating your own ephemera, with stamps like this. You'll see here in a minute, I'm also gonna use the veins on these stamps to heat emboss um, and give a really great texture to these die cuts. And so a stamping platform is really great to make sure that you're positioning everything properly. I also have this um, stamping bug that I'm using to press down and give a lot of really good even pressure. Um, mine was gifted to me from Etsy, but I do notice that now the manufacturers are starting to come out with their own versions of these. I think Pink Fresh Studio particularly is coming out with one. So um, I definitely recommend both of those things if you're doing a lot of stamping. There's the veins of this stamp set. And so I'm positioning them on top of the solid stamps I've already done. And you can see where this comes in really handy. So I can stamp all of them at once. Um, even with embossing ink, I like to stamp twice just to make sure that I'm getting it really um, crisp image. You can see I used my um, powder bag there first before I, I embossed to make sure that there's no static, to make sure that nothing's going to stick anywhere except for the area that I'm putting down with the embossing ink. So I stamped those veins on the leaves twice. And now I'm gonna use this like lovely rust colored embossing powder that I've just had in my stash for quite a while um, to add the veins of the leaves. So the leaves, the um, distress oxides that I'm using are really kind of pastel colors, which work really great with this Pink Fresh Studio Good Times collection. Um, so I like to go with this darker um, heat embossing powder to give it like a really good contrast. 
Um, and so when I heat emboss it, when I zap it with the gun here, you can see it gives a really nice shiny texture. Like it's almost like I added enamel to the stamp and I really love it. And I'm gonna run these through with the dies. Um, I tried to make the proper purple color by combining two inks, but I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I don't end up using those. I just go with this. I have the dusty rose, that brownish color is like, um, linen, I think is the name of it. And then I used, uh, speckled egg is that blue color. And then if you get embossing powder in any section that you're not really wanting it to be, um, use a tiny paintbrush to just kind of wipe it away. Um, distress oxides can also be used sometimes as embossing ink. So make sure that your distress oxide ink is fully dry before you try to use embossing ink with them or your, your powder will stick on the sections that aren't fully dry as well. So I have die cut those. Um, I ran them through my Big Shot. You can see them at the bottom right there. So I'm kind of showing you how I'm gonna set everything up. So I have the two strips of paper, one at the top and one at the bottom. And then I'm just going to line up all of my die cut leaves. I've pulled out the purple ones. They didn't quite work. And plus I already used that purple paper. So I didn't really need um, the purple leaf. And I also had enough with just of uh, the other three colors that I had die cut to kind of fill up all along the bottom and then do a little cluster at the top right. That kind of is opposite of my photos and gives a good balance to the page. I'm happy with how that looks. So now I'm going through and deciding what else I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use that green strip at the top of the like title page of the collection kit to create a little bit of contrast here. So I have this um, Alta New uh, concentric circle die that's been in my stash for a while. I really love this die. When you cut it in half, it kind of resembles a rainbow. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So I took off that green uh, strip of paper and now I'm gonna cut in half those concentric circles. And when I do that, I'll have just like a lovely rainbow or scallop, if you will. And um, it kind of ends up, because I put it upside down, it looks like a scallop, I guess. So I'm going to layer that. Um, I use the like kind of the turquoisey blue color, very much similar to the speckled egg color to cut that out of uh, one of the papers in the collection. And now I'm just kind of showing you the look I'm going for here. So I'm gonna glue down um, those border pieces that I just cut in half to that darker green strip of paper. I'm using Nouveau Adhesive and um, I'm just kinda gonna line them up along the 12 by 12 strip of paper. And then we're gonna layer that underneath that purple top portion of the strip of paper to um, give a good little contrast there. And I'm really happy with the way it looks. I've said this recently before, but um, green and purple were my favorite like color combinations when I was young. So I really, it was an accident kind of, but I love the way that looks. Um, probably like a unintentional accident. Like I, I love that contrast between the purple and the green. So I'm really happy with how that looks. And um, you know, I don't need it at the bottom because all of the leaves are gonna go along the seam of the paper. Um, so you won't be able to, you wouldn't have been able to see it if I added a strip down there. I'm using the cherry tape here. Um, you can find that in the cherry on top store and I will link down below with all of my products that I use. They will be an affiliate link, no charge to you, but you can click that link and go straight to the products I used and, um, grab them if you want. If you have fall photos that you're still documenting, I love this collection. It's really unique. It's kind of, um, a different vibe than a lot of the fall collections. So I really like that. Um, this like piece of mm, rust color twine was from like a kit that I had um, that just kind of like tied the kit together. But I was like, well, I'm gonna use that in my page because it kind of matched like the leaves and the photo and everything. So I am lining up the leaves along the bottom um, seam of the paper here. I backed both of my photos with some white cardstock. I'm gonna stick those down here you can see your fur does look blue it does look blue I can see why people maybe thought that um, but it's just the editing of the photo so I kind of cover up the blue fur part so you can see like a really bright photo and then the more muted tone editing job that I did on the top photo and I like that fun little um, visual uh, duplicate photo thing that I have going on I've done that a few times before I've done that a lot of times with like a black and white photo and a color photo where you can peek out and see one or the other from below. 
that's always fun too. So I just laid these leaves down, um, kind of just, you know, separated the colors, adding in the two littler leaves to kind of um, give a last final cluster look down there. I love these dyes. You could use these in so many color combinations. They don't have to just be um, fall. You can um, use maybe just like that tall one. You could totally make that a Christmas tree. I mean, just some thoughts. It could also just be like a green leaf. If you have like another floral um, stamp that you would like to use, it would make really good foliage under a floral for like spring photos. I like to always think of different ways that I can use my themed products outside of the box so that I can stretch them, you know, all year long for different types of layouts. So of course I fiddled with that bow forever. I cut out a lot of that. I'm not so great with the bows, but I'm gonna tuck under the additional leaf clusters down um, underneath that little bow. And I'm really liking how that looks up there. And I glue that down with Nuvo adhesive. And then I actually am gonna tack down the knot of the bow as well, just so it doesn't wiggle around too much once I get it exactly how I like it. <laughs> And I did cut two little tiny slits at the either end of that purple paper, and that's kind of holding that um, twine in place. And I just put the glue, so that's why that um, embossing powder is kind of holding that down. Now, these tiny puffy alphas from the Good Times collection, they come in warm colors and cool colors, and so I'm gonna combine them all because I'm using all the colors. And the title is going to be a little bit long. It is Freelance Emotional Support Pup. <laughs> Cause she is my emotional support pup, but it's on her own schedule. Um, she schedules the time that she will so emotionally support me. <laughs> um, but I had a lot of fun with this. I, it was just the title I found on Pinterest and I thought, oh my gosh, that's so cute. That describes my dog because she's also very cat-like at times. So I just um, line those titles up along the top and bottoms of the photos and I love how that looks. And now I've just um, pulled out this cardstock sticker and that's where I'm gonna place a little bit of my journaling to further explain the title. I um, place it there underneath those leaves and then just embellish with a few of the cardstock stickers around there as well as including some journaling on those gridded, that grid of paper, if that makes sense, sorry. <laughs> um, I like that they had a few of the stickers that were that same rust color that I used to heat emboss. So I definitely pulled out those to um, highlight that color and bring it out. So now I'm doing my journaling. Um, I just chose a really thin line black ink pen to create that. And we're almost done. I'm just gonna add in a few additional stickers, one that matches the speckled egg color. I'm gonna add in a couple of cardstock sticker leaves from the collection. They are in that same yellow color, so they go well with the leaves. And I was trying not to add any florals because I had used only leaves, but there are a couple florals that are that beautiful rust color, so I decided to create a visual triangle with three stickers that are that rust color, and that will finish us out. Let me know down below if you have any questions. Like I said, I'm gonna put the links down below to these products if you would like to grab them. You can also find me on the blog over at A Cherry on Top today, and I think they still have some really amazing deals going on, so make sure to check out the store and the sales. Um, it is Cyber Monday today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe, and and let me know if you have any questions. Bye, y'all.